assalamu alaikum dear students today we are going to study about the structure of dna so our topic is structure of dna okay when we talk about structure of dna then the structure of dna can be studied under two heads or categories one is the physical structure the physical structure and second is the chemical structure in physical structure of dna we will try to understand the gross morphology of the dna what are the external features of the dna the physical structure of the dna and then we will study the chemical structure of dna and in which we will study about the chemical composition of dna how the uh, dna uh, is composed by uh, the different chemical constituents so first let us discuss the physical structure of dna physical structure of dna was first of all studied by her name was astbury astbury done a technique or she used a technique which is called as x-ray crystallography x-ray crystallography or sorry uh, it's called as x-ray diffraction technique x-ray diffraction technique astbury used this x-ray diffraction technique to take the x x ray of the dna just like we take the uh, x ray of our body astbury took the x ray dif uh, uh, x ray of the dna molecule by using x ray diffraction technique and with the help of this x ray diffraction technique astbury gave the 3d structure of dna the 3d structure of dna she proposed a 3d structure of dna with the help of this x-ray diffraction technique she also suggested that sugar and phosphate sugar and phosphate form the backbone of dna molecule the second point which she deducted or observed using x-ray diffraction technique of dna was that the dna molecule is composed of a sugar and phosphate molecules right which form the backbone of the dna and also she observed that in dna molecule there were purines and pyrimidines there were purines and pyrimidines present in the dna which were placed at the right angle of this backbone sugar phosphate backbone astbury also concluded with the, with the help of her experiment that the distance between base pairs distance between two base pairs distance between two base pairs or nucleotides of which the dna is composed of is 3. Point, is 3.4 angstrom so distance between two nucleotides nucleotides are the basic unit of dna which we will study in chemical structure the distance between two nucleotides is 3.4 angstrom this was the data which was observed by astbury using x-ray diffraction technique then there came another two very important scientists or genetists whose name is wilkin and franklin wilkin and franklin in 1952 they also took a, an x-ray of dna with the help of a technique which is called as x-ray crystallography technique it is somewhat advanced technique than x-ray diffraction technique this is x ray x ray crystallography technique in this they crystallized a dna molecule and then obtained 
an X-ray of that crystallized DNA molecule. And with this experiment, they observed that the distance or the diameter of the two DNA strains is 20 angstrom. So the diameter of the DNA molecule is 20 angstrom. Since DNA is composed of two strains, they observed that the distance between two strains is 20 angstrom. They also observed that there is a turn in the DNA molecule and each turn is 34 angstrom in length and each turn contains and each turn contains 34 nucleotides or sorry 10 base pairs 10 base pairs or nucleotides simply put as so these were the data which were observed by Wilkin and Franklin in 1952 by taking an x-ray of a DNA of a crystallized DNA molecule now based on the data observed by Astbury, Wilkin and Franklin there came two geneticists who did not perform any experiment with the DNA to study the structure but they took the data of Astbury, Wilkin and Franklin and then they by studying that data they came with their own uh, structure or model of DNA which is called as Watson and Crick model of DNA Watson and Crick model of DNA Watson and Crick were two geneticists who used the data observed by Astbury, Wilkin and Franklin and by studying that data, they proposed the structure of the DNA. And in 1960, this, what's the, this model was proposed by them in 1953. For this structure, they were jointly given, along with Franklin, Nobel Prize for 1962. 1962, Nobel Prize went to Watson Creek for their DNA model, DNA structure. So what is basically the Watson and Crick model of DNA? To study the Watson and Crick model of DNA, I will draw a diagram of a DNA molecule. Just like this. In their first point, Watson and Crick proposed that DNA molecule is comprised of two strains, two nucleotide strains. It's composed of two nucleotide strains or which is called as polynucleotides since it contains many nucleotides. So the first point given by Watson and Crick uh, in their model was that the DNA molecule is comprised of two strains. So we draw these two strains. They also propose that these two strains are these two strains are parallel to each other. These two strains are parallel to each other. Now when we study the three-dimensional structure of the DNA, they may not look parallel to us but in actual sense, they are parallel to each other. What do we mean by being parallel? Parallel means the distance between the two strands of DNA is uniform throughout the DNA molecule. But this, because this DNA molecule is present, the two strands are present in a helical manner, that's why we are not able to, uh, uh, to observe the parallel nature of these two strains but basically they are parallel right so these according to them the, there are two strains in a DNA molecule 
the two strands are parallel to each other and the two strands are bound by they are bonded by hydrogen bonds they are bonded by hydrogen bonds so according to them there are hydrogen bonds which bind these two dna molecules right right according to them there are present hydrogen bonds between the two dna strands so it is the help of it is these hydrogen bonds which are present throughout the molecule of the dna and these hydrogen bonds bind the two strands of the dna together right so they they proposed that the two strands have hydrogen bonds between them according to this model the distance between the two strands of dna is 20 angstrom so the distance between two dna strands is 20 angstrom we we'll write another point distance between two strands is 20 angstrom and this is uniform since these two uh, strands are parallel to each other the distance between two strands is uniform throughout now as i said because of the helical nature of the dna molecule since these two strands are twisted over each other in a helical manner you can see there is an area where the where the distance looks maximum this is called as major groove and we see an area where there is almost no distance this is called as minor groove but as i said in reality this major groove and minor groove does not exist since these two are parallel strands the distance between them is 20 angstrom throughout now another point given by this model is that the distance between two nucleotides is distance between two nucleotides is 3.4 angstrom so the distance between two nucleotides is so this is one nucleotide this is another nucleotide of this strand this is one nucleotide this is another nucleotide of this strand so it is basically the hydrogen bond is present between the nucleotide of one strand and the nucleotide of another strand this we will understand when we study the chemical structure the distance between the two nucleotides is 0.4 angstrom 0.4 angstrom okay another point given by watson and crick in their model is that the length of the term say here from this term up to this term the length of the one term of molecule is 34 angstrom so length of one term of dna is 34 angstrom so the distance between one term and another term of molecule is 34 angstrom then another point given by this watson and crick model is that between this 34 angstrom length between one term and 10 term since the distance between two nucleotides is 0.34 angstrom and the distance of one term is 34 angstrom so watson and crick concluded that one term of dna molecule can accommodate 10 nucleotides they can accommodate 10 nucleotides from this term up to this term there are present 10 nucleotides so 10 nucleotides or base pairs which we call as per term of dna molecule 
पर टर्न ऑफ डीएनए मॉलिक्यूल ओके एंड एट द पॉइंट व्हिच वी कैन राइट अबाउट द स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ दिस डीएनए मॉलिक्यूल इज दैट बिकॉज द टू डीएनए स्ट्रेन्स they are parallel to each other and they are bound by hydrogen bonds just like this in a sense the this dna molecule looks like a ladder it looks like a ladder where the ladder has two strands and there are present the steps in between them just like this right so in this way Watson and Crick, by studying the data provided by the experiments performed by Astbury, Wilkin, and Franklin, Watson and Crick very intelligently they used their data and they proposed this structure of DNA molecule, the physical structure of DNA molecule. Now, another point you should write is that the two strains are. the two strands are not only parallel but they are helical helical which means when we observe a dna molecule the two strands are twisted around each other on a common axis on a common axis which gives the dna a form of a helix just like the spring so the two strands are parallel but they are present in a helical uh, manner when we observe the three three dimensional structure of dna then we can easily observe that the two strands are helical in nature but they are also parallel at the same time the distance between two strands remains always the same one strand is called as sen strain one strain is called as sen strain right sen strain means that during uh, transcription during formation of mrna only one strain is used only one strain is used for the formation of mrna for passing information to mrna that strand is called as sen strand and the other strand other strand is called as anti sen strand other strand is called as anti sen strand and this sen strand is another strand it also contains genetic information it is complementary to the sen strand but mrna is not formed from this anti sen strain that's why it's called as uh, anti sen strain or it's also called as mis sen strain or non sen strain whatever you wish but the better term is anti sen strain so one strain is used for the formation of mrna that's called as the sen strain another is not used for the formation of mrna that's called as anti sen strain another point which you will write is that the two strains are anti parallel the two strains are anti parallel the two strains are anti parallel they run in opposite direction when we will study their chemical structure we will easily observe what we mean by being anti parallel these two strains are have polarity these two strands have polarity they have ends one end is 3 dash and its other end is 5 dash the other strands end in on this direction is 5 dash and it is here 3 dash so we will obs we observe here that these two strands have polarity these strands have polarity they have ends one end is called as 3 dash end another end is called as 5 dash end this strand has also its polarity it has also its ends one end is 5 dash another end is 3 dash 
What do we mean by 5-3- we will understand it when we study the chemical structure of DNA. But for the time being, you will remember that these two strands are anti-parallel, their direction is opposite, they are parallel, but their direction is opposite, that's why we call them as anti-parallel. And these two strands have polarity, they have ends, one end is called as 3 dash and another end is called as 5 dash. So this is all about the physical structure of DNA or what we say commonly called as the Watson and Crick model of DNA, right? And in our next class, inshallah, we will be taking about, up, up the chemical structure of DNA where we will study the chemical constituents of the DNA molecule. What is the structure? What is the nature of the chemical composition of the DNA? How are they arranged in the DNA molecules? And uh, we will study in detail about the chemical structure of DNA in our next class. For this time being, I am very thankful for you for watching this video and I hope you, will, uh, you have understood the structure of DNA and for any query or question you can contact me at any time I am available to you. Thank you very much.